So, um, how was your 2020? Okay, okay. I know, I know. 2020 was by far one of the worst years we've ever lived. I know, I know. I know all your guys' years was terrible. My 2020 year was terrible. In fact, uh, let's see. If I wanted to make a list about what happened in 2020... Oh, let's see, I, uh, I left the Splatoon G Mod Slash SFM community, I, uh, got my wisdom teeth removed, I, uh, we had a political division between some of our family members, uh, man, if I really wanted to, the list could go on and on and on. In fact, uh, this is my second recording of doing this, uh, 2020 Rewind. I know I'm late in doing this, uh, little, like, 2020 Rewind thing, in fact, um, what is it? As of me recording this, it's January 10th at like 2.30 in the morning in 2021, which means it's 10 days after 2020. But um, to be completely honest, I just didn't know exactly um, what to do in terms of um, how I wanted to record or just do the 2020 rewind in general. In fact, I was full on just thinking of just not doing it at all. But, um, I decided, no, L let's, let's do it. Let, let's do it and let's just see what happens because, um, well, admittedly, um, I should put my mic down. It's, uh, it's getting a little annoying carrying it. Plus, according to my uh, software, it seems like I'm kind of just erasing the mic a lot. So let me just, uh, I'm sorry, peeps, if that's too loud. So after constantly rethinking over how I wanted to record this, I decided to do the thing that Jacksepticeye sort of did. Last year, Jacksepticeye made this video about like, oh, this is how we're going to end 2020. He did like, he basically opened up this um, sheet thing or whatever that everyone was able to, you know, sign up for where they could like be part of this charity for something. And it was supposed to be like a way of ending 2020 on the most positive note they could ever end it on. So after thinking of a while, I didn't know when to do it, but I decided let's just do whatever I can, or at least me. Let me just do whatever I can to end 2020 in the most positive way I can possibly do it. It's going to be hard because I am actually not the most positive man on planet Earth, surprisingly. But I do have a sister who is also a very... Well, not also, but I have a sister who is a very positive person, to, to my surprise. So, because we're because she's my sister, I'm pretty sure some of her genes of positivity somewhere in my genes... It's 2.30, alright? I, I can't speak. So, uh, without further... Oh, uh, you see, I can't speak! So, uh, without further ado, I'm gonna do everything I can to name every single positive thing I can think of that has happened last year. Here is one positive thing that I can assure you guys at least. Despite how much my channel seemed to have been dying, technically speaking, 2020 was my second strongest year on YouTube, if you really think about it. What was it? 2019 was my strongest since I have earned, I think around like 7,500 subscribers. 2020, I earned about like 5,500, I think, maybe a little less, but technically speaking was actually stronger than 2018 and any other year I've been on YouTube. So that's a positive note. Uh, oh, another of one of my strongest positive notes is that YouTube, at least of late 2020, slowly but surely became something that made me think maybe YouTube can become my job. Maybe. Maybe. December of 2020, which is, you know, the last month, obviously, I earned about like $530 off of my monthly revenue from just YouTube alone. And because of that, because well, because of how long I've been doing YouTube now, because of, you know, some of the other money I've been gaining outside of YouTube, um, whether that be to like doing house chores for my family or whatever, um, I have around $6,000 now. So in terms of YouTube revenue, it's going really good actually. In fact, it might actually be the most I've ever gained compared to, what was it, 2019, which is when I started um, actually, um, what is it, gaining revenue. I'm not sure this is really a positive thing, but 
tech I left the uh, Splatoon Gmod slash SFM community, and I'm not gonna lie, something about it felt relieving. I don't know what it is, but something about it was just like, wow, I felt like as if I took like so many like cuffs off my shoulders. Now, I don't know, it's just like, it was just that something about like even the minor things in the community was just like, man, I just could not handle just being in there for so long that I'm glad that I left. I don't know why, but in like, it's both a negative thing because I left some of the people that I actually like. Well, not really left. In fact, some of them actually left me because I left the community. It's a negative thing because I left the community and it's a positive thing because I left the community. Let's just go with that. Another positive thing is that um, on Twitter at least, at least on my Twitter, I've been actually finding a lot more people that I actually like and that I actually uh, made friends with. Not IRL obviously because of this whole pandemic, but on, you know, online at least. Um, um, so uh, as a uh, good example of someone that I've actually been um, recently like hanging out with on Twitter and Discord recently this year, shoutouts to the Starlight Let's Player who um, just know that he's a, a friend of mine on Discord and Twitter. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, and, in, and sort of the source of that, of me being able to find more people on Twitter that I actually like and make friends with on Twitter and maybe Discord at least is um I became a I actually became a legitimate Neptunia fan now um this year has been so revolvent around Neptunia and the series in general what is it um November of 2019 was when I technically started becoming a fan of it it was like summer of like maybe 2019 that I started like figuring it out it was a thing and then it was like what March of this you know 2020 and stuff where um yeah it was until March where um you know after the pandemic started and when I had an extended spring break because of it I decided to actually try out the Neptunia games for once my first one being V2R which hilariously enough is considerably a downgrade from V2 but regardless I enjoyed it a lot Maybe it's because I like JRPGs, but it made me kind of like want to try out some of the more Neptunia games. So off the camera, I actually tried out V2, uh, Four Goddesses Online, and Super Neptunia RPG for the Nintendo Switch. Even though I probably should have gotten it for the PS4, but when we were on vacation, I saw that it was on sale and I decided, you know what? I already have my money with me. But again, regardless, I enjoyed the game. A lot. I enjoyed all the games. And yeah, I, I still enjoy V2R because it has some content that V2 doesn't have, so you know what? Content! Gotta like it. Another positive thing, and I kind of just thought about this now, but one of the biggest positive things, and this was something that my family has been wanting to do for the longest time possible. Some of you people might already know, but usually every summer I would always go to Illinois to see my grandparents, you know, with, you know, my mother, my father, my sister, brother, whatever, you know, and occasionally my older brother sometimes. Um, this is pretty much a consistent thing, and we even did it, you know, in May, no, June, when we were in a pandemic. When we were told to stay indoors, we did the opposite, basically. And, but finally, for once in our lifetime, despite the fact we were in a pandemic, we finally got our cousins to come with us to Illinois. And they loved it. They loved it a lot. In fact, one of them would have been completely fine living there for the rest of her life. She would have been fine. And I think that said a lot because, number one, they enjoyed it. They enjoyed something we've wanted to, you know, take them to for a long time. We got, we got them to see, like, the things that we do at our grandparents' house. They got to eat our grandparents' cooking, which, oh my goodness, for them and for us... Man, it is delicious. We got to show them all the things that's in Illinois, that at least on our side of Illinois that we live at, or at least our grandparents live at, that the, our cousins usually would not see in Arizona and, you know, all that types of stuff. And they just got to see a lot of things that's in Illinois that they would have never, ever seen in Arizona. It was life-changing for them. 
No, it wasn't. Life-changing would be the first time they went to Mexico. Like me. And like everyone I was with. Which for me, it sucked. And that's how much life-changing it was. I realized how much it sucks to not live in the US. Okay, figuratively, but not literally. It was probably one of the coolest, greatest summers we've ever had. Speaking of which, speaking of cousins, this year, we have been hanging out with them more times than we've hanged out with them for the past few years. Weirdly enough, because we, I don't know, it's like the moment when the pandemic happened, something about all of us, or at least me and some of my other cousins were like, yo, Let's do exactly what they didn't say to do. So we've been hanging out with each other way more times than often now. In fact, my little brother has been sleeping over at their place much more frequently now. That's how much we've been uh, getting close to each other. Because for the past few years, we've never actually have ever been with them regularly a week. Usually, we would see them at least at least once a month at the very least maybe unlucky we might get unlucky we may not have seen them for at least one month i do not remember a single day or at least a single week we have gone without seeing them i don't know how much of a positive thing this is but technically i graduated this year i have graduated from high school and, you know, I moved on to college now. I've actually done college this month, in fact. Or, not this... I... Two four, it's 2.45 right now, please. Give, give me some slack. Or cut me some slack, okay? I did college, um, and we started in August, late August, and... I mean, it wasn't great at first, but... I mean, I'm pretty sure going to college, even saying that alone is probably a flex, as it is. Because college is not easy. At all. It sucks. Another positive thing that's happened is, um, because I was able to actually earn the most amount of revenue on YouTube recently, I was able to actually get some games that I wanted to try out. Other than the Neptunia games, um, just recently I tried out the, uh, Namco Museum Archives Volume 1 and Devil May Cry. 3 on the Nintendo Switch, which even though it was technically this year, but let's just pretend like this is 2020. Another positive thing, I didn't really think about this, but now that I think about it, one of the other positive things that has happened this year is that, um, 2020 has some of my favorite picks in terms of music. Um, three songs I can think of was Scattering the Ashes from Trivium. Trivium, I think that's how you say it. I'll Find My Way from Will Ryan Dia Games or, you know, Iris Official. And right now, my absolute current favorite, Bury the Light, which is a uh, music theme from Devil May Cry 5, but was made by Cassie Edwards and was sang by Victor Borba. I think that's all the positive things I can possibly name out that has happened in 2020 that I can possibly think of. I mean, it's very likely there were actually more, and um, I just couldn't think of all of them, but um, I mean, if we want to include Christmas stuff, I got a new uh, GameCube controller. It's a third party one, but this is like a just in case my, uh, the one that I use the absolute most breaks eventually, which could happen. I got a green screen, as you've already seen already. It probably has something playing already, and I just don't know. Um, I got this Pichu and Mr. Game Watch amiibo for Christmas, and I've had a lot of fun with these for the first few days I've had them. I got the Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, which, uh, because I play so much Smash Ultimate and Splatoon 2, this little buddy here has actually been sitting next to my desk for uh, a week now. And yeah. That might be all the positive things I can possibly name now, honestly. Um, this might actually be a lot more longer than I thought. This actually might, like, ironically be a lot more of a longer rewind than, um, you know, whatever, you know? Um, I guess another thing I can also name is I got better at Smash Ultimate, finally. Like, I started recently getting better. I got more characters into Elite Smash and stuff. 
Um, I got a little worse in Splatoon 2, but I did get to explore more content outside of those two games. Like, I recently covered the album Everywhere at the End of Time, which, for whatever reason, recently started blowing up on my channel now. Which, you know, again, it's probably getting that weird YouTube algorithm treatment where it stays dead on my channel for a bit, then I don't know, it just shoots up in views. Like, recently, this week, it went from, like, 300 views to 1,000. So, yeah, um, also, I, I want you guys to keep this in mind. This decision I have isn't really final, but... I may return Splatoon to 1v1s. Again, decision isn't final, but I have been thinking about it. But not only that, but I've also been thinking about also mission mashing it with uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate 1v1s. Um, I've, I mean, i kind of already been doing that in streams, like twice already, so uh, we don't. I don't know, but I'm thinking about reopening the Splatoon 2 1v1s and also um, doing Smash Ultimate 1v1s. Not final, but keep it in mind. Something positive to look forward to this year. Also, um, if for whatever guys you guys are interested, uh, recently me and Eric created a, well, me and Angel slash Eric slash whatever you want to call him, created a second channel for the both of us called The Professionals. Basically, that channel is literally just dedicated to ranting about literally anything. So far, we're just ranting about a lot of things that have happened in the Splatoon Gmon slash SFM community. And so far, a lot of spicy stuff has been happening with this fella named Alpha Swan. Other than that, I think that's all I got. Um, hope you guys enjoy watching this 2020 Rewind. Um, again, I know 2020 was not the best year. I know because I can say so myself, there's a lot of things that have happened in 2020 that just sucked for all of us, sucked for me as well, but the best we can do is look past that, look at the positive things, and yeah. Which is why, again, this is the second time I've recorded this 2020 Rewind. So if you enjoyed watching this video, give it a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and um, comment down below what was the most positive thing that's happened to you this year. Because we need some of that positivity. We need, a, we need as much of it as we can. I'll see you guys whatever we do next. Take care. God bless you guys. And let's just pray 2021 will not be as bad as 2020. I mean, I know we're a few days in and some crazy stuff has happened. But let's just hope and pray. Okay, that's the best we can do. I'm asking you, let's just hope and pray 2020 will be a good year. Take care of yourselves. See ya. God bless you.